first of all, I will uh, try to orient you about the section and the specimen that we are studying today. This is a mid-sagittal section of the pelvis. This is the anterior side here, where you can see the pubic surfaces. And posteriorly is the sacrum. You can see the pieces here of the sacrum and then the coccyx more anteriorly. And uh, the viscera of the pelvis, you can see here, this is the urinary bladder. That is the urinary bladder. This is a male subject, of course, and uh, urinary bladder. And here, uh, urinary bladder below is related to the prostate, prostate gland. So this is the prostate gland. You can see here that there are a lot of vessels around the prostate because these, they represent the prostatic venous plexus. I mentioned that there are plexuses in the veins and the, in the pelvis are in the form of plexuses. So this is an example of a prostatic venous plexus around the prostate gland. Behind the, the urinary bladder, you can see the seminal vesicles. These are the seminal vesicles. And this is the vase or the ductus deferens coming from the anterior abdominal wall on the lateral side of the pelvis and then goes behind the bladder and you can see it is distended here forming the ampulla of the vase. Behind you can see the uh, here's the region of the anal canal and this is the rectum here. That is the rectum, the ampulla of the rectum behind. No. So this is the uh, rectum here and goes down into the into the perineum. So I will remove the rectum. You can see here behind and below the rectum, in fact, you can see these thin muscle fibers. These muscle fibers, they belong <coughs> to the levator ani muscle. This is part of the pelvic diaphragm. The thin muscle fibers here, the thin muscle fibers, they belong to the pelvic diaphragm, levator ani <coughs> and coccygeus muscles. And you see here, medially, they will be inserted into the anal coccygeal body that extends from the coccyx into, toward the anal canal. This is the anal coccygeal body, the fibrous band here. These fibers are attached to the anal coccygeal body, the fibers of levator ani. It's a very thin muscle, but a very important muscle in uh, uh, maintaining the pelvic viscera in their position. Before going into the vessels and nerves, I want to show you the muscles. Here, laterally, is the obturator internus muscle. This is the obturator internus muscle. Mm -hmm. And posteriorly is the piriformis muscle. Mm -hmm. And you can see the plexus of nerves superficial to the muscle or on the inside of the muscle. Uh, the muscle forms, the piriformis muscle forms a bed for the plexus. The plexus is the sacral plexus mm -hmm. here. Now let's deal with the vessels. This is the common iliac artery, mm -hmm. common iliac artery, and the common iliac bifurcates into external and internal iliac arteries. Most of the veins have been removed, but the external iliac vein is preserved here. So this is the external iliac vein. And if you follow the artery and the vein, you will see that they pass beneath the inguinal ligament and the artery forms the femoral artery, the vein continues with the femoral vein. So the external iliac artery and external iliac vein. We are more concerned here in the pelvis about the internal iliac artery. This is the internal iliac artery and it divides into anterior division and a posterior division. If we follow the posterior division, which has three parietal branches, the posterior division continues, its continuation is the superior gluteal. So this is the superior gluteal artery. The superior gluteal artery leaves the pelvis above piriformis muscle and is located in relation to the sacral plexus. It is located between the lumbosacral trunk and S1. It is above S1. This is the superior gluteal artery. Okay? Now, the other branches of the posterior division, we have these two branches. They represent the lateral sacral artery, the artery that supplies the uh, uh, sacrum and passes through the sacral foramina to supply the contents and then goes back into the back. The third branch is the iliolumbar artery. 
the ileal lumbar artery goes up into the iliac fossa. Here, this is the region of the iliac fossa, and you can see that the ileal lumbar artery is located here, accompanied by the vein. So these are the ileal lumbar vessels. They ascend up into the iliac fossa, supplies an iliac branch and a lumbar branch that goes to anastomose with the lumbar artery, goes up to anastomose with the lumbar arteries. So it is located as it ascends up into the iliac fossa. It is located between two nerves, uh, the uh, obturator nerve and the lumbosacral trunk. The artery and vein, they are the iliolumbar vessels. So now these are the three branches of the posterior division of the internal iliac artery. Now let's move to the anterior division. The anterior division of the internal iliac artery has uh, visceral and parietal branches. Now one of the branches, that's it. So it is accompanied, this is the artery, it is accompanied by a nerve, the nerve is above and the vein is below. The three structures, the van, from below upwards, vein, ar artery, and nerve. This is the obturator vein, obturator artery, and the obturator nerve, and they leave the pelvis through the obturator foramen to supply the medial aspect of the thigh. So this is the obturator artery. Arises from the anterior aspect, or the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. The other branch, if you follow the other branch, you will see that it goes to the superior surface of the urinary bladder. And this is the umbilical artery or the superior vesical artery. Of course, the distal part of the artery is obliterated and forms the medial umbilical ligament on the anterior abdominal wall. Of the other branches of the anterior division, we will follow this artery here, and you will see that this artery leaves the pelvis below piriformis muscle, and this is the inferior gluteal artery. It leaves below S2. Again, I will show you the sacral plexus. This is the lumbosacral trunk, S1 and S2. Above S1 is the superior gluteal artery, and below S2 is the inferior gluteal artery. The superior gluteal artery is a branch of the posterior division, and the inferior gluteal artery is a branch of anterior division of the internal iliac artery. Of the other branches that we see here in this subject is this branch that goes toward the seminal vesicles, the lower part of the urinary bladder and the prostate, and this is the inferior vesical artery. So this is the inferior vesical artery. And you can see here another branch, small, small branch, leaving again below piriformis. It is the pudendal, internal pudendal artery. That is the internal pudendal artery. The artery that leaves the pelvis through the greater sciatic and goes into the gluteal region, then immediately leaves the gluteal region to the perineum. So uh, we have seen almost all of the branches of the internal iliac artery. An important relation uh, here uh, that I want you to see in the pelvis is the obturator nerve and its relation to the vessels. See, this is the bifurcation of the common iliac artery, external iliac and internal iliac. And you can see that the obturator nerve, the obturator nerve is located in the fossa between the external and internal iliac uh, vessels. This region in the female is called the ovarian fossa is related to the ovary where the nerve might be irritated in diseases of the ovary. Or even in the, in the, in the male, uh, it might be irritated by a pelvic appendix. If the appendix has a pelvic position, it might irritate the obturator nerve and cause referred pain to the medial aspect of the thigh. Now here, this is specimen. Uh, this is the anterior abdominal wall. And this is the posterior aspect of the anterior abdominal wall, where this is the peritoneum here. And here is the posterior aspect of the rectus abdominis muscle. The artery here, which goes into the rectus sheath, is inferior. the inferior epigastric. epigastric artery. Let's follow the inferior epigastric artery. And we will see that the inferior epigastric artery arises from the external iliac artery. 
So this is the external iliac. These are the external iliac vessels. This is the artery and this is the vein. External iliac vessels. Mm. Yeah. And it is a branch of the external iliac artery. These vessels, the inferior epigastric vessels, they supply a small tiny branch here. You can see on the superior ramus of the pubis. This is a pubic branch of the inferior epigastric artery. And this branch, anastomosis with a similar pubic branch that should uh, come from the obturator artery. Here is the region of the obturator nerves and vessels is located here. And there is another pubic branch here. They anastomose together. Now I want you to see the relation of this pubic branch. It is related here to the region of the femoral ring. This is the femoral ring here and bounded medially by the triangular thick ligament which is the lacunar ligament. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes the obturator artery, the pr proximal part of the obturator artery is not present. Mm -hmm. The obturator artery does not arise from the internal iliac artery and its distal part will be replaced by this pubic branch. So this pubic branch will become large mm -hmm. to replace the main obturator artery. artery. This is what we call the aberrant or abnormal obturator artery and it is closely related to the femoral ring and lacunar ligament and might be the source of severe bleeding during, uh, during release of a femoral hernia. Mm -hmm. present. The variation is present in 20% of people. Thank you very much.